Good day, I'm Nisa Mudli and you're watching Asset TV here at the 2023 annual GPF Thought Leadership Conference with Sufiso Sibir, Head of Investments at the GPF. Welcome, Sufiso. Thank you. So let's talk about the implications of the just transition strategy for the investment industry. Okay. So just transition, um, so I'll first acknowledge and say that you know, climate change is, is real um, and the related risks are, are real in the impacts if, in the economy and in society. So I'll just start there. In terms of transition, um, there are a couple of risks which emanate from implementing a transition that is too quick. Right? So the first would be around what we call or what's referred to as physical related risks things that emanate um, or relate to um, basically stranded assets. Um, so if we have a situation where because of transition capital pulling out, um, owners of uh, particular assets, mines, industrial um, companies, etc., may just pull out and leave. Uh, you will then have stranded assets. Um, and, you know, we, in, in the South African context, that has been a particular issue where you have lots of you know, stranded mines and you know the societal impacts that uh, are caused relating to that. Second impact would be um, around you know the use of natural resources. So um, with a transition that happens rapidly, there'll be a greater demand for certain commodities. Um, for example, what's referred to sometimes as your transition. Uh, metals, uh, your rare earth minerals, uh, etc., which are used uh, in renewable energy sources, uh, be it uh, your batteries, etc., etc. So, when a transition does uh, uh, proceed very rapidly, uh, 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 the prices of those assets um, would, or those commodities rather, would increase, and that will have impacts on markets. Uh, we are a commodity driven economy. Um, and you add speculation to that, it, it would have some implications, both positive and negative. The more nuanced point to that is you would have uh, a stampede for resources, um, particularly on the African continent, and a flooding in of capital uh, in maybe areas which may not have a lot of governance as you would want that, and that has other unintended consequences. Um, so those are some of the is issues around just transition. So how do we think of it uh, as a GPF is um, in applying a just transition approach, you have to consider uh, historical dependencies that we have, particularly in South Africa, where you know, anything between 90 to 80 percent of our electricity is driven from fossil based fuels. So uh, moving away from that uh, will be uh, a very enormous task. So um, our approach is two-pronged. One is to stay uh, investing in these assets um, and exercise active ownership, ensuring that um, the entities which, which accept our capital uh, uh, would be held accountable uh, to you know, scientific targets, in ensuring that there's uh, a better societal outcomes. And then secondly, is to then increase investing uh, in more renewable energy sources, uh, which will have negative carbon impacts. So that's basically how we deal with it. Long-winded answer to your very short question. So you preempted me a little bit there because okay. I was going to say the GEPF as is one of the largest investors in fossil fuels in the country. And how do you marry that with your commitment towards the just transition? But you mentioned active ownership. So how is the GEPF actively holding those fossil fuel companies accountable? So uh, what we have in place and through uh, our investment manager, the Public Investment Corporation or the PIC, is a proxy voting guideline policy, right? Uh, which basically says that as an investment manager who acts on the behalf of the government employees pension fund, um, it outlines a set of guidelines as to our vote regarding certain things. So that's the first. Second, we have uh, what we refer to as the responsible investment policy. That's also in our um, 
and a website which you know outlines our views around our responsible investing. So with being uh, a large asset allocator, um, it's unavoidable that you will be caught in that contradiction where because there's a need for capital and uh, we need to generate returns, um, particularly in our economy and um, uh, with the liabilities and obligations that the fund has, you will, um, as, as, as a function and, and by default, end up uh, uh, issuing capital to you know, non-renewables or uh, um, fossil fuel generating or related entities. So um, we, as, as mentioned, then uh, 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 act you know, via our, our, our asset manager, the PIC, um, to, to basically encourage uh, active ownership in that regard. Mm. And then finally, globally and locally, we're moving from a low interest, low inflation mm. environment to high interest, high inflation environment. How have you positioned to protect your investment portfolio? Yeah, so uh, as a fund, we, we have a strategic asset allocation, which takes a, um, a through the cycle approach, which is very long term. Um, considering you know your medium to short term fluctuations in rate regimes, uh, I think we're sitting in a very low interest rate, uh, high growth environment recently. Now we're in a high inflation, uh, low growth environment as well. So that's a for the first data point. Um, then in addition to that, and as a function of um, the, the the strategy that we have, is a, a high allocation to fixed income, particularly uh, index linked bonds. Um, South African ones, or South African ones at that, and what that allows us to do is, when you do have uh, a high inflation environment as we had, that dampens the effect on the portfolio. So, for example, in the first quarter of this year, where you had inflation being very high, that was uh, provided a bit of stability on the portfolio, and that's a very actually a very um, important point because. What you have um, in a defined benefit um, scheme is you have your liabilities which grow by inflation or CPI in particular. Then you have assets which grow um, you know, based on market uh, forces and, when, and are infected or affected by um, your CPI. So it's, very, it's slightly different. So um, when you have liabilities growing at such a high scale because of high inflation, you need to have assets which relate um, or move in that direction. And that's why uh, we have a large, uh, uh, a substantially large or relatively large allocation to index linked bonds uh, like that. So that's how we, we, we position. Obviously, high interest rates environment do cause, um, you know, some sharp market contractions, but, you know, allocations in more uh, defensive um, uh, sectors uh, does uh, ensure that the portfolio uh, and the fund as a whole has, you know, dampens the, the, the impact. Thank you so much, Safiso, for joining us and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks for having me.